Hey everybody, it is Monday. Uh, I don't even know what the date number is anymore. I'm so busy. Um, this whole week has been be a crazy week for me at work. I'm probably going to be working 20, if not 30 overs of overtime. So if, if these videos seem a little me disoriented, don't kid yourself. I'm just incredibly busy. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? Let's talk about Kickstarter and retailers. So... If any of you are following my personal Facebook page, or even I think on our business page, we mentioned to retailers what we were looking to do and how to include them in the Kickstarter. And as I say, as typical, a lot of resistance, a lot of issues, but some, some, some were actually, I say some were valid, some weren't. Some were very atypical, well, you know, I don't think this is a good way to go. And then we had something else pop up, but I'm gonna talk about the resistance first through retail. Um, we basically set it up that the retailers will be getting a, a similar version to what we're releasing to the donors, but kind of different. The best way to describe it is, I'm going to use the Apple analogy, it's the same thing for the retailers. The retailers are getting the Apple cut in slices, while the donors are getting the Apple as a whole. Same product, same thing, just how it's given to them is totally different, and that was the easiest way to explain it. So the retailers will get the individual adventures for the Kickstarter, while the people will get the collected version in a one-off book. Um, we're not giving away the individual issues to the donors because we're giving them the big book, and we're not giving the big book to the retailers because we're giving them the individual issues. We found that to be a way to kind of separate it like that. In addition, we also are planning to not give, now this is some people, I know some donors are going to be upset, but you'll understand in a second. We're also planning not to give the donors rewards to them for at least two months as we do the retail. And people are like, well, uh, what the hell? Why does the retail get them first? Because once again, our main goal in this is to help gain sales through retail. And giving retail two months access to something that you're already gonna get. You're already gonna get everything attached to it. You're gonna get the fun stuff. You're gonna get all the cool stuff. It's a good deal. You're still gonna get everything you expect to get. They're just gonna have it for two months where they can sell it to help make sales to help build interest in what we're doing. Because a lot of people are like, well, is this going to be a generic adventure or what? It's, it's, it's kind of like half and half. The first part will be generic and adventure. The second part, the other, the, well, the first two will be generic. The last two, two will be neo access specific. But we'll put some we'll be generic content through both and neo access specific content through both. I don't want to ruin what's really going on. But you'll get to see a lot of crossover in it. And it'll be useful in any game table. So if you want to come to, you can play the first two parts of it and pretty much say, okay, now we're going to switch over to this other part, and we're going to this other different world, and this is what's going to happen when we play in this world. That's how we kind of set it up. It's kind of an introduction, or if you've played in New Yorkers before, a reintroduction to the setting, and getting people involved with it. And, you know, my way of helping retail was to give, to give this two-month period. The donors themselves, they still get all the stuff they're going to get. They're going to get all the add-ons to it, all the threshold goals, but they're going to get one solid book. One solid book. We're going to let you guys have that. We're also going to build a color version for you guys at a, at a higher um, donor level. So it's a unique piece. We will not have this on retail. This will not be sold in retail. That, you know, that's not going to be our focus is putting this on retail. Our focus is putting the individual issues in retail. It just makes more sense to us. But we've had some, we've had some pushback on people saying, well, actually specifically a couple of retailers saying, well, why would someone want to get one or the other that's not fair to them? And I'm like, well, if you're a donor, you're going to get more. So there's not really a less fair situation. Those who don't donate will get the less of the thing. They're just going to get the four adventures. If, you don't, if you're a donor and you donate, you get more cool stuff. Because, simply put, you put money in, you put, you've added more of a risk, you've done that. So we're going to reward you for that. And I think that's only fair and reasonable. I don't think there's any big deal with that. Then another person came in saying... Which I thought was very interesting. He goes, this is not how Kickstarter is supposed to be used. And then he goes on the situation of what he feels what Kickstarter should be. And I, and this has been a big issue this week. Apparently, you know, with Zach, well, last week, really, with Zach Bratt, he had the whole thing. People come out saying, you know, how could he be asking for this much money on Kickstarter? He's already got money. He should be putting up the money himself. Da, da, da. And it became a big, huge thing so much that he did up, I think, almost a 20-minute long YouTube video about this. And even more so, um, the owners of Kickstarter had to go online and basically inform people what Kickstarter was when they built it and what it is they conceive it to be. And it's very much it's, it's very much in line with what I think Kickstarter is. I think Kickstarter is a way that people can use it to to harness their networks 
their interest, the people that like them, into selling products. And well, you know, it is selling, well, getting a product funded, but it is really to sell the product most times out of 10. So a lot of people have been like, no, it should only be for small people. You shouldn't have big companies come in. And to me, it makes me laugh when people say that, but it's just like, guys, Kickstarter is the ultimate way of balancing what something is if something should get made and what something shouldn't get made. If people pay for it, it means it should get made. If people don't want it, they don't pay for it, it doesn't get the numbers, it doesn't get paid. I mean, it doesn't get made. It's just that simple. It's not really rocket science going on here. But a lot of people have turned this into assuming that just because, I mean, let's be honest. Veronica Mars had a fan base. People put money into it. It's going to be made as a movie. You know, that's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, will Joss Wheaton do something like this? You know, I'm not going to lie. He probably will. Will we support him? Yeah, probably. Why? Because Joss Wheaton has proved to be a credible guy. And you know the quality stuff he's going to put out is going to be very, very cool. So, you know, this this is very much falls in the whole smack of feel to me of are you authentic or not? Really, dude? Really? In the turning lane. You don't know what freaking lane you're in. Welcome to South Florida Drive. So, it, like I said, it's, it's just, you know, what's authentic? What isn't authentic? If you do quality work and it's good stuff and people want to buy it, why would you prevent them from buying it? Well, he's not an authentic guy. He didn't do... The guy, what kind of BS is that? He didn't do that. I mean, why are you... Come on, dude. Get it together. If it's a cool idea and people want to see it, why not make just make it? And if people are going to donate to it, what's the big deal? There's this, um, there's a cartoon, I can't remember exactly where it was, I saw the webcomic saw it, and I thought it was funny because it really described what, what some people perceive Kip's Kickstarter is and what it isn't. And basically it was like a little cartoon, the guy's on his website, he's on, he's on the computer looking at Kickstarter and going, oh gosh, there's so many good things involved with Kickstarter this month. Oh, but I only have my $20 to spend all month. Okay, I guess I'll go with this big, super important Kickstarter. Sorry, little guy, you won't make the money. And underneath, because this is how Kickstarter really works. Hey, that's a cool thing. Let me put some money to it. You know, I, I I don't know if people allot money to their Kickstarter. I I don't. If I see something cool, I donate to it. If I don't want to, I don't. I don't have an allotted amount that I use on a monthly basis of this money is only for Kickstarter. And once I've spent it all, I can't do buy anything. I can't do anything else this month. I've already spent Kickstarter money. I I I don't know who does that. I don't. I don't know. Ah! I love when the camera falls down like that. <laughs> ah! I don't know who does that. I don't know why someone would do that. Uh, you know, I, I don't. I don't get that part of it. It's 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 not my way. I would do it. So maybe somebody does that. Maybe that's the only way they can budget for themselves. Hey, okay. I I don't know what to say to you. I guess you've got to pick and choose which ones you want. But you must like so many. I mean, you know, I usually only fund things that really, really excite me, you know, or I find interesting. Or, you know, in some cases, if a friend's working on it, hey, toss them some support. You know, those are kind of the rules I go with. I don't, you know, I, I don't fund things that are like, eh, yeah, you know. I think if you're going to fund something, fund something good. Fund something revolutionary. Fund something that, you know, when people are done and like, damn, that was cool as hell. And it may not be like, you know, it may not be the big million dollar, you know, funder like a Paizo product or Bones or whatever, but it may be something you're passionate about. And that's, you know, that's to me what's important. Find a project you can get passionate about and then support that. That's what's important. None of this, I only have $15 to spend this month. How am I going to split it through six projects? You know, nothing silly like that. Just, you know, fund the projects you like to fund. And if you can't fund the project or you're not able to, you just can't do it. It happens. Wow, and I swear to you, the funny part is, this is the same freaking guy who cut me off just two seconds ago before. Ass. I'm trying not to get mad at these people, but sometimes you just wonder, well, why don't you think a signal is important when you want to get over three lanes of traffic? I don't understand that at all. Okay, anyway. Yeah, so we had that aspect. Um, I, and then, like, actually, yesterday was a Saturday. I came up with another idea, but I'm, but I'm always, like I said, I'm always trying to keep retailers involved, and it's and, it, and it's kind of difficult to keep retailers involved in this. It really is. I mean, they want to get involved, but they don't. They don't. It seems very tough to find a place to get them involved. It does, 
and even when dealing with them, it's like the attitude you get sometimes you're just like, why, why am I trying so hard to help you out if you don't treat me like this? And there's some kind of this attitude. So you're like, okay. But I've said, I want to get them involved. I don't want to cut anybody out. I want them to be involved in this project. And I was like, okay. That's, that's only fair. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fair assessment. So, I'm still thinking of ideas. Still thinking, so I came up with this crazy idea. I'm like, what if I kind of flip it on its head? How about instead of having retailers get access, we let donors do that. And you're like, huh, what? Well, let me explain it like this. I'm, I'm the donor. I see your project out there. I think you got a really cool project. But I noticed my local store can't really get access to it and stuff like that. But I really, I think more people would love to actually see this product out there. So this is what I do. So at a certain donor level, I get this retailer special reward that I as a customer get. I get all the cool stuff I get as a customer, I get all that stuff. But then I get also another pack, I get another packet that I get to decide which retail location I'd like to send this packet to. So, for example, you have a Kickstarter where it's 30 bucks, you get your donor stuff, you get a book, whatever, book, you know, all that stuff. But then for another $25 or $30 or whatever, you can send a packet to your closest retailer, your closest fam, your, fam, uh, your friendly gaming store. You can send them this packet and it will be the individual, we use our Kickstarter link, will be the individual issues of our adventure that we're sending you for X amount of dollars. Now people are going to say like, well, why would people buy products for their vegan local store what is that you know that's you know if they're serious they should buy it yes but then this came to me well what if i offer the donors this you get all the you get you get the books for you, so for the kickstarter you get those you get the books for the retailer and because you're so nice donating your retailer we'll offer you double the amount value whatever it is it might be of products in pdfs that we'll send directly to you so for the quick guys who are doing the quick math if the research, if the retail kit costs you twenty five bucks, you get fifty dollars of credit in PDFs of our product. Now, I don't know about many people, but that's not a bad deal because a lot of PDFs, you know, a lot of PDFs are only two bucks. So if you know it's two bucks, you get twenty five different PDFs from us. You know, we've got nearly six hundred PDFs in our catalog. Six hundred. Yeah, think about that for a second. Nearly six hundred PDFs. We can find something that you like. You can find something you want to try out, you know, if we do that. I think that might be the best incentive yet. It's very much a sense of, hey, I like my local store. I think they're really cool. They've done a lot for me. I've really enjoyed a lot of time there. I don't know if they have the money to support this. So here, here's my option. I'm going to buy this retail kit. I'm going to send it out to this store, and I'm going to get this other credit. It's a win-win-win. Store gets free product. They can sell. See, people are interested. It doesn't cost them a cent. People get double the money they invest for the product and still get the other stuff they get. It's a it's a win win win. I think. I don't know. I'm hoping this is a good idea. You tell me. All right, we got like a minute left. So I gotta be really quick about this. It's, it's, as always, I'm always close to work. Um, yeah, so that's what we're thinking. I'm thinking that we can do this. I think it can come across well. I think. It, I think this is a good idea. But I want to hear your opinion on it. Please feel free to make uh, comments at the bottom. Or you can, I think it's this side. Yeah, I think it's this side. You can also um, check us out on Facebook and LinkedIn and stuff like that. I said LinkedIn. Yeah, that's funny. Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, and I'm on LinkedIn too, so I think it's this side. Um, you can check us out and, you know, give us your opinion. Tell us what you think. All right, I got to get out of here because I got to finish going to work. Talk to you all later.